Hello everybody and welcome to the West Ham White YouTube channel, it's Corey and yes of course it is the Predicted Eleven score prediction video for West Ham United versus Liverpool tomorrow afternoon. I'm buzzing for it, listen we come into the game full of confidence, three back-to-back -back consecutive wins in the Premier League, we're looking really really good at the moment, we, we come up against the side in Liverpool that did unfortunately or fortunately get that 3-1 win against Tottenham Hotspur, they are looking like there's a slightly bit of a return in form from them, they obviously have some key dangerous players that West Ham need to be aware of, of course this is a predicted 11 a video, so I'm going to look at the different players, their tendencies, the work rates, the things, the attributes that they generally offer, talk about West Ham's predicted lineup, which is more than likely to be the same as each week, but nonetheless I am looking forward to it, let's get straight into things, like the video as well and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Now, Starting with Liverpool, in goal, no surprises, it's not Adrian, of course it is, Alisson in goal for Liverpool. He's a fantastic keeper, brilliant shot stopper, commanding in the box. The only slight criticism of him was against Burnley when he came and he rushed out to try and meet that ball from Ashley Barnes and miss, but of course that can happen to a lot of keepers and has done in the league this season, particularly Edison, but nonetheless his decision making in terms of when to go and, and when to sort of position himself within, actually his use of positioning in the goal is, is massively crucial and has to be given the fact that Liverpool play that high line and can be exploited. It's going to be interesting to see how West Ham can try and get beyond this man. I would look at set pieces, particularly with the two centre-backs that they're going to employ tomorrow um, and, and try and get a shot off or, or a header or latch onto a second ball. That could be the clear avenue of how West Ham are going to break down this Liverpool defence and this goalkeeper. But nonetheless, he is one of the best goalkeepers in the league. It is going to be particularly tricky to get past him. Um, and West Ham are going to have to be clinical and we are going to have to be decisive in terms of our decision-making, particularly when we're trying to get in on goal. Right-back position now... My initial opinion on this and what I was going to talk about was going to be different, but given his performance against Tottenham Hotspur, I have to praise him a little bit more than I would have. It is Trent Alexander-Arnold. And for me, you know, technically he's phenomenal. Let, let's, let's be perfectly clear, clear here. He is brilliant deliveries, fantastic switch passes, technically very good on the ball, finds the man, great vision. For me, he's going to transition into a centre midfielder, a number eight or a number 10, because he, he has got those kind of playmaker attributes um, that make him really, really dangerous going forward. Like I said in the in the um, in the tactical breakdown, the fact that he creates those inverted runs, he likes to come central, he likes to pick up positions. You saw against Tottenham as well, running into the box late to get that goal. Equally, you see that fantastic delivery for the third goal for Mane. So his vision, his passing range, um, his delivery, his technicality are all fantastic attributes going forward. But defensively, I think he can be caught. And I don't think West Ham are primed necessarily to hit them on that on that right-hand side with, with Pablo Fornals and Creswell. I can't see them coming too far out of position, particularly in that low block shape, um, unless to nullify it. There certainly won't be any overlaps for West Ham to, to exploit the spacing behind. But you feel that if Mickey Antonio drops into a deep position, particularly when we're in a defensive shape, that he can, of course, run in behind. And he's got that tendency to veer off to the left. And his directness and ability to run into space will exploit the fact that Trent can be caught out of position. Equally, even when he's in position, I find that sometimes his body shape and his ability to deal one-on-one, -on -one, he gets caught a little bit square on. And you feel that if West Ham, particularly with the likes of Antonio, if Ben Rama can win the ball in turnover and possibly push up a little bit higher, that he can be caught out of, of position, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and that West Ham can really exploit that right-hand side. And it, I feel a bit harsh criticising Trent Alexander-Arnold because he is a phenomenal player. Um, and going forward, he's fantastic. And no doubt he's going to put West Ham under a little bit of pressure, particularly in central areas, creating those overloads and with his vision, possibly inviting the likes of Mane um, onto the end of crosses. But let's keep an eye out for him. But again, if West Ham can exploit that, that space, particularly with Trent's positioning, we should go for it. Now, the centre-back positions, they've massively changed in terms of the personnel. We know Van Dijk, Joe Gomez, Joel Matip, all out. Fabinho's out as well, um, and he'd been covering in that centre-back position for the majority of the season and, and, and looked good. They're going to have to employ Jordan Henderson there, first and foremost. Now, they're losing Jordan Henderson's delivery, particularly from the centre midfield positions, his ability to cover for the full-backs when they press on, as well as his athleticism in terms of pressing the opposition size. He will slot into that right centre-back position. Um, again, I think the, the problem with those two centre-backs and I think that's come into play really when Van Dijk's gone out of the side is is the space that they leave between between each other and the fact that you see Spurs particularly first three minutes with humans some were able to play direct balls through the two centre backs. Um 
and they were able to get caught on that high line. And, and Jordan Henderson isn't an actual centre back, can get caught square on. Positionally, as well, from set pieces, he struggles particularly with aerial threats, has been the case throughout the season. Um, but again, the dangerous part of Jordan Henderson is his distribution, his, his fantastic long range passing. He'd be willing to step into the midfield as well, naturally. I think we saw elements in that Spurs game where he was trying to get balls over the tops for the likes of Salah. So, particularly, even if the forward three sit a little bit deeper, Jordan Henderson's range is going to invite them into play, try and get them in beyond that West Ham back line. So, he is actually an offensive throw. Defensively, we can get at him. I would like to see particularly Mikel Antonio. I think that is going to be our key player in this game in terms of trying to break that defensive line of Liverpool, get beyond him. You know, I know he's athletic. Um, and again, I guess he has to be particularly protecting Trent Alexander-Arnold when he pushes further up. But I think Mickey Antonio has got the beating of him. He's got the pace, the directness. Um, West Ham really need to exploit that. And we also need to be decisive in terms of playing the ball through the lines. And I think that's when Ben Rama will come into play, particularly between Jordan Henderson and the other centre-back. Now, the other centre-back for me... They've switched and they've chopped and changed really between Rhys Williams, who has struggled again, particularly with balls through the centre. Did it against Aston Villa in the Cup. I think he did it in the other game previously before the Tottenham game. So he is a weak spot. I believe they're going to play Nat Phillips. Now, we all know him. He played against West Ham last time out. I thought he did really well against us, if I'm honest. I think physically he was good. Yes, we had Sebastian Allaire playing, who wasn't going to stretch the play, who wasn't going to get him beyond and didn't really hold up the ball and, and stop Williams getting in possession and allowing Liverpool to press. Mickey Antonio is a different completely different ball game you know in terms of his ability to come a little bit deeper hold the ball up equally turn he's got the pace and the mobility to get in behind and as composers I've seen that Phillips in recent games particularly second half against Spurs and albeit Spurs didn't really press up against Liverpool they allowed him to have a lot of the ball and were very much defensive I think we can hurt Liverpool particularly with the two centre-backs getting in beyond getting in behind and possibly look at Mikel Antonio drawing him out of position naturally of course West Ham I don't think are going to invite the likes of Jarrod Bowen getting in beyond Thomas Suchek this is going to be an incredibly disciplined game but it doesn't mean that if West Ham want to press at certain periods of the game that we can't get beyond these two centre-backs particularly with turnovers in possession because I think there are clutch moments in this game that West Ham could benefit from particularly in that midfield and they are a very press-resistant midfield this Liverpool side so there can be moments it will be tough, but there's no reason why West Ham can't try and beat those two centre-backs at points during this game. The left-back, there is no introduction for this man because clearly he's a fantastic player. He's Andy Robertson. For me, the better defensively out of the two full-backs in, in him and Trent Alexander-Arnold. His position in terms of being able to sort of cut in, particularly with the two centre-backs, is positive. It's something that Trent doesn't really do and positionally gets caught off. Equally, I think defensively, his ability to press one-on-one -on -one is better than Trent's as well. It keeps the width a lot better than Trent. I suppose, you know, I spoke about this earlier, having Sadio Mane drop into those deep left positions as opposed to Salah not doing that on the right-hand side and Trent pushing up a little bit. That left-hand side for Liverpool, there is a little bit more solidity. Um in terms of Andy Robertson, we know he's got quality in terms of the switch ball. It's how Liverpool try and break down low block teams by switching the play and forcing them out of position and asking them to try and press the ball and allowing space in behind. Equally, when, when Andy Robertson gets forward, expecting to try and get to the byline, he's more willing to get to that byline and cut back than Trent Alexander-Arnold is, who at times plays almost like a number eight or even a 10 when arriving late in the box. So he offers a different type of proposition. Equally, he can make an inverted run, particularly if Liverpool have a lot of possession in that final third. So again, he poses a lot of issues for West Ham. Position he allows Mane to come a bit central and play that centre forward role that he does so well and find little pockets of space in the box. So, you know, all we, although we talk about Trent Alexander Arnold and the technical quality that he undoubtedly has, and I, and I feel that he is better than, than Robertson in terms of passing range, I think positionally, defensively, the ability to try and run in beyond Robertson offers a, a little bit more of a threat and, and actually supports a lot of the, the forward men in, in making those run in the box. So it's going to be tough. I would like to see Jared Bowen try and push up against uh, both against Robertson and particularly with four nows against Trent Alexander Arnold, pushing further back, prevent Liverpool from trying to introduce a lot of the midfielders. Um, and the attacking men into central areas and create overloads. I think that's where West Ham need to be um, aware um, and need to be proactive in terms of dealing with that. Now, let's talk about the midfield of Liverpool. Has changed throughout the season, obviously, and particularly from last season. I think the, the success was in really the Fabinho, Henderson and Wijnaldum you know, trio. That has changed massively given the fact Fabinho dropped to centre-back. He isn't in the side. Um, they've brought in Thiago, which for me, technically, he's the better player of all of the three. And I think he offers something in both a pivot role, he can offer an eight role and also in a ten role. That is the level of technicality, um, vision, passing range of this player. But what was interesting enough is I think Liverpool tried to support their defenders this season, particularly with Van Dijk out by playing the double pivot against Spurs. I think Spurs are a team that's, that sat back against them, probably 
a bit too cautious. Um, it allowed them to just play the one pivot in Genie Wijnaldum. And Wijnaldum has played in that eight role previously for Liverpool across a number of seasons. I thought he was very impressive. I think he offers a level of athleticism to protect the two centre-backs, particularly when one of them is not very mobile, the other is not a centre-back either. So, he does protect them. His ball retention is fantastic. His balance on the ball. Um, he has support naturally from the likes of Milner and Thiago dropping deep. Bobby Firmino playing in the 10 role, allowing Liverpool to keep that ball. So he isn't put under too much pressure. Interestingly enough, he is supported by someone like a James Milner when they play that high line that will cover for the fullbacks, pressing on and also protect the two centre-backs. So he isn't, in terms of a defensive shape, pulled out too many times. I think actually he's very composed on the ball. He's got good short passing ranges. Um, and if Liverpool want to try and employ him possibly in an eight role, he's got that athleticism and that mobility to get in beyond and possibly create an overload in that box. So again, an impressive player um, on an individual standpoint. In terms of a positional standpoint, I think it does allow Liverpool to introduce those those fullbacks a little bit more into the game. And they've obviously struggled in recent weeks, particularly in trying to get in beyond, um, probably due to being a bit cautious about being hit on the counter. I think against West Ham, they possibly may look to, to let that handbrake off just a little bit um, and introduce because they, they found a, a method in terms of getting goals, getting beyond and trying to get the three points that they need. Um, in midfield, in terms of the eight role, Milner um, will be on the right hand side. Obviously, he's replacing Jordan Henderson. They have lost Henderson's ability to press up, support the fullbacks when they push on as well, and having delivery and distribution in that final third. They have lost it. There's no doubt about it. They can still use it from the centre-back position, particularly if opposition teams try and push up a little bit too high. Milner offers natural athleticism. Um, he's actually defensively very disciplined for a player that's transitioned from almost being a left midfielder, right midfielder, playing at points in, in terms of centre midfield. Now he's sitting a little bit deeper, can cover those positions. Equally, I think he's got a level of athleticism to press to allow Liverpool to keep the presses aside, which is hugely important and why Klopp relies on him in certain games. We know his versatility when he's covered for Robertson at left back. I think people talk about him having a good game against Tottenham, but I do think Tottenham didn't press up enough against Liverpool. And I know that sounds a little bit contradictory in terms of pressing against the side that is so good in terms of transition. But I felt that, that at times Milner was a little bit sloppy in possession. You'd be looking at West Ham's pivots, particularly Rice and Suchek at times, and more specifically Suchek, to use his athleticism and his physicality to try and win the ball in turnover and try and exploit the fact that Liverpool are only playing one pivot and they will play a high line. I would like to see that. It's less. It's a lot more difficult with somebody like a Thiago on the left-hand side and that battle between Rice and Thiago could be so crucial in terms of how many clutch moments West Ham have in this game. But I feel like Milner is a, a slightly a weaker point in this midfield, in an industrious midfield that does so much positionally to protect the high line and equally to keep on the press. I don't expect Milner to be introduced too much into that final third. I think Thiago is going to be employed there. And these are the reasons why. Listen, let's get into Thiago. Thiago for me, has been one of my favourite players across Europe. I think technically he's absolutely superb in the pivot role that he played for Bayern Munich. I think we talk about Thiago as if he's an attacking midfielder or a playmaker. His passing range is phenomenal. His touch is fantastic. His vision is unbelievable. His positional sense in terms of defensively is superb and he did support a Bayern Munich team for a number of years in that role. Came into this Liverpool side, played in that pivot role at times and kept the position and allowed them to have a high press. That, of course, naturally was when they had Jordan Henderson and his athleticism to play in the eight to push forward and his ability Ability to find that pass in the final third. Now they've lost that with Henderson dropping back, Fabinho not playing in that um, in that pivot role, Wijnaldum coming into the pivot role itself. I think Jurgen Klopp has opted for playing Thiago and it did work against Tottenham Hotspur. He had a lot of space. Tottenham relinquished a lot of space in the midfield and you can't afford to give that to somebody like Thiago now. I think employing him in a slightly more advanced role, he'll join the overloads, particularly with Firmino, Mane and Salah, but equally his vision, his passing, his ability to shoot from range is all qualities that I think Liverpool need to break down sides in a low block. So again, like I said about Milner, I think there is an opportunity for Rice to go and try and meet him and create a turnover in possession where we can exploit the high line. The problem is with someone like Thiago is he's so composed and his ball retention is so fantastic. He is a press-resistant midfielder. So he can try and beat Declan Rice's press and equally... Declan Rice himself is a very press-resistant midfielder. So that battle between the two is going to be crucial in this game. And I don't think that West Ham, particularly Declan Rice, has to pick his moments if he's going to go and press him and win that ball and, and try and create a turnover. Because ultimately, 
if he gets caught out. You've got the likes of Firmino dropping into the 10 roll, Milner pushing on in the 8 roll. There are too many chances for Liverpool to get that ball in the final third where they can clearly create something with the inverted forward. So it's something we have to be wary of. For me, he's their best player technically um, and he has been a good addition to their side, albeit I know he's had some criticism because they haven't done too well when he's been in there. Um, I think his position in that, in that almost that number 10 roll at times um, will suit them in an attacking sense. Fingers crossed he absolutely fails, but I'm sure he'll cause us some issues. Now for the front line, um, they need no real introduction. Everybody knows, you know, Salah, Mane, Firmino, they've been a front three for Liverpool for a number of years. They've got loads of technical attributes, all different, all given different types of roles. Um, some better than another, some some with higher work rate than, than one another. I think, you know, people talk about them slowing down and, and becoming predictable. I think teams in general are sitting a lot deeper against Liverpool and forcing them to deep areas. And listen, Liverpool, particularly last season, I remember, you know, they used Henderson's long ball, particularly from midfield, allowed him to drop to the pivot and allow the, the, the forwards to drop a bit deeper and then turn opposition defences in behind by, by almost inviting them to play a high line. Um, they still have that avenue, but I think teams aren't really... The teams are sitting so deep that it's hard for Liverpool to break them down. Now, let's get into the left-hand side. Sadio Mane, for me, is their best forward player. I know people would debate it's Mo because, obviously, the number of goals that he scored. But I think Mane, in terms positionally, in the final third, is fantastic. Becomes a centre-forward, finds the space. He's fantastic in the air. His aerial ability is massively underrated. His movement, his pacing behind is crucial in terms of Liverpool breaking down defences and teams that play try and play even a mid-block. He's, he's perfect for because he can drop in deep and he can run in behind. But equally, what isn't picked up on is his defensive work rate, particularly on that left-hand side. We talk about Liverpool having a weakness with Trent pushing up and Mohamed Salah in terms of his defensive abilities. Sadio Mane is more than happy to use his athleticism to chase back, win the ball and carry it from deep areas. And he's obviously got the pace and the mobility to do so. For me, he's overall their best attacking player in terms of actually affecting the play, um, getting in behind and creating chances. And the problem is with somebody like Sadio Mane, particularly, particularly down that right-hand side with Craig Dawson, is Craig Dawson can't be afforded to be drawn into any type of midfield battle where Thiago has the ball or Firmino starts to drop deep and he needs to be massively protected by Rice and Suchek because if he isn't, Mane has got the ability to, to run from deep, pick up those lines and pick up those kind of distribution from either the right-hand side with Trent and latch onto something. And ultimately, even if Mane you know, doesn't score a goal or, or hits the post or it's wayward, he will drag West Ham out of position and naturally it will invite the midfield and Firmino and Salah into the box where they can finish off. So, I mean, that is problematic. Just touched on it then. The criticism of him is, is he clinical enough? Argument would be no. Um, I think Salah's the better finisher for me. Um, not as good in the air, but in terms of open play with the ball at his feet, he is the better finisher. Um, but I think but I think Mane's ability to, to drag teams out of position, to get chances, he will score the goals. He creates chances for himself. Defensive work rate. Overall, he's their best attacking player and in terms of his defensive side of play. Um, let's talk about Mohamed Salah because obviously he gets a lot of the limelight and it is because of the amount of goals he scores. He can transition from deep, generally doesn't do it. Um, will keep a lot wider than Mane will in terms of moving forward. Mane isn't, you know, we talk about Mane playing in a, in a wide space, not really anymore. He's more of an inverted forward. Salah will keep wide, particularly up to a certain level. And obviously with Trent becoming a little bit inverted, Salah can sometimes keep his width the, for the majority of the time in that final third. But because he's on that left foot on the right-hand side, he wants to naturally come in. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the ability to go and beat someone and try and get beyond and, and take it to the byline. I think we saw that particularly against Spurs. He can drop deep, use Henderson's delivery from that right-hand side, beat the line and get him beyond and, and get a shot off on goal. I think the criticism of Salah has been his awareness in terms of the players around him, in terms of Firmino, Mane making the runs and making the movement that they're very intelligent in doing so and not finding them and not allowing Liverpool to finish off games. But equally, Salah's pace can can get the ball from deep particularly if teams do a high press and they and they very rarely do against Liverpool but he will come into that defensive position even if he's not as active defensively as Mane and he can run with the ball and he's got the pace and and he's always a threat in terms of his mobility in behind and I think in, in terms of the way Liverpool play and having an inverted forward, having Trent in inverted positions down that right-hand side, it suits Creswell. There isn't too much of a weakness. I think Fornells will have to come a little bit central at times. He'll have to protect Creswell because still Salah can get in behind. But it will, will allow West Ham, particularly on that left-hand side, to keep a little bit narrow um, and keep a little bit of shape. And I think that is important for us. But listen, nonetheless, you can't write Salah off. I think even against Spurs, he came in central areas where Firmino had dropped to a 10, found Amane coming in beyond. So he can be creative. Um, but naturally he wants to stick on the wide areas, come in 
and he won't necessarily be as mobile um, or, or run from deep as much as Sadio Mane. Um, and this man, and he gets a lot of stick, to be fair, I think from from neutral fans. I think people sometimes don't understand his role within this side. Obviously, he doesn't get the goals that, that, that Salah and Mane will. But I really rate him as a player, and I think Klopp does as well. And you can see that in the way that they use Roberto Firmino um, in games. Now, he has so much positional fluidity talk about this in terms of sides you look at Everton they allow Hamas Rodriguez to have the same but it's a completely different player because whilst he has that fluidity and that freedom to go pick up roles he does work hard in each of the roles that he picks up he's willing to come deep and pick the ball up the two centre-backs particularly with a high line draw defences out of position and it can lower position defences out of their deep line because it does mean that of course naturally when you have a number nine that is willing to drop so deep that you feel that you can push up but naturally you've got players like Salah and Mane that have still got that directness to get him beyond and, and almost it, it tricks them into moving a little bit too high. Equally, someone like a, a Firmino can drop into those deep areas in midfield, keep possession at times with the likes of the two number eights in Thiago and James Milner, Wijnaldum in the pivot role, pr- pressing a little bit higher. So he does offer that that, that kind of position, possessional retention um, that is important, particularly against sides that, that are trying to control the game and dominate the game. Equally, I think in the final third, his ability to drop into that 10 role and move into those spaces when the likes of Mane and Salah get in beyond is what really hurts teams. And I think, you know, against you know, against the likes of Spurs, when he's made that movement across the near post, he has that in his locker. He's not a natural number nine, but he's got that kind of intelligence to get across the near post and get a shot off on goal. Is he clinical enough? Not from the edge of the box for me. But I think within the box, he definitely has enough ability. But I think the key thing to remember about somebody like a Firmino is his role is to draw defences out of position. It is to keep possession. It isn't necessarily to be a goal scorer. I think the key goal scorers, and you'll see this in the way that if West Ham get a bit of possession and press up against Liverpool, really Salah and Mane are the two pressing forwards. Firmino can sit a little bit deeper and that's because Klopp knows he doesn't necessarily need him in the final third at a stage but he will become important particularly when Liverpool do get in that final third when they have that press and West Ham cannot afford to switch off against him that's why it's such an interesting battle between the likes of Thiago Firmino Rice and Suchek in terms of when Rice and Suchek go to press when they try and sit off and protect the two centre-backs equally when Dawson or Ogbonna sit off someone like a Roberto Firmino and obviously Firmino is important in terms of creating those overloads in the box he is another attacking element to their side and I know he's not probably clinical as most Liverpool fans would want I'm happy he isn't um but he just draws people out of space and he does allow the likes of Salah and Mane to get him beyond and he's a, he's a crucial player to the way they play he really really is we've seen it in, in, in probably the Manchester United game and the Tottenham game that he's still influencing the game he's probably their most influential player overall in an attacking sense even if the stats don't back that up. But yeah, certainly a player that West Ham need to be very, very much switched on to. Let's get on to the West Ham predicted 11. Now, obviously, we're going to come into this game with a lot of confidence. I am feeling positive. I do think based on the tactical breakdown and the predicted 11 and the strengths of the side, West Ham will have very few moments in this game to make an impact. I think set pieces outside of open play will be the most crucial thing in terms of trying to get a goal and a result. Other than that, from open play, West Ham will have to take risks. And I always say that each week, but be decisive in taking those risks. And I think West Ham can afford to be disciplined. You know, this isn't a game that West Ham need to go and win. We can see it. We can get a draw against them. But with Mikel Antonio on our side, particularly with the work at Ben Rama in that 10 role, I think there's more opportunities in this game than was previously to get a result. So I am looking forward to it massively. Um, I would back West Ham particularly in this game. Now, let's get on to the predicted 11 for West Ham United. No surprises, Fabianski in goal. It's what's going to be so interesting with Fabianski, and I think we saw this against Crystal Palace, was when the likes of Mane... And Salah, because for me, they will do. It's just it's just limiting the amount of times that they get in beyond how he deals with that. And I, I think ultimately, you know, Fabianski has shown one-on-one. His ability to go and meet the ball and close the space down has been important. I think we saw it against Manchester City earlier in the season and we see it from him. You know, he's a fantastic shot stopper, but equally he's fantastic in closing down that space. The issue with Liverpool is when you created so many overloads in the box from Firmino, Salah, Mane, it, he's going to have to be massively switched on at times. If Liverpool break, they could have too many in open space and that becomes problematic. And it, in, in that instance, it's very, very hard for Fabianski to manage. So he does need a defence in front of him to be disciplined. He needs Rice and Suchek as well to be aware of the likes of Firmino dropping into little pockets. And I think if he does get that protection, generally, if there's shots from distance, you would have to back Fabianski. You'd also have to back him from set pieces as well, given that Liverpool don't have as much of a threat from a set piece as West Ham. So I'm very positive on that front. Uh, right back position will be Vladimir Sufal. Again, I think there was kind of you know a lot of talk in terms of that Palace game, particularly when Wilfred Zaha came to that left-hand side. It did cause him a few issues, I have to admit. And I think running from deep and the ability to get him beyond 
the pace troubled him. But I think the difference between Soufal and Fredericks, and I think Fredericks, by the way, since he, since he comes on in a couple of games, has got the recovery pace to deal with it. I think Soufal is cuter defensively. I think he understands that even if he's beaten for pace, he understands to get them away from the goal, try and nullify that danger a little bit more. That's why he's so important to this West Ham side. You have to look at someone like Amane. Won't necessarily keep the width, so it is an issue for Dawson. So he does need to keep a little bit central to help Dawson out at times. But equally, you've got Robertson making those runs to the byline. Now, that battle is going to be interesting because Robertson has got good pace. But I think Soufal, knowing that he's going to get to the byline, unlike a Wilfred Zaha, who had the unpredictability. He's got his fan. Listen, Wilfred Zaha's got fantastic ability to beat a man generally. But in terms of his unpredictability, in terms of going to the byline or cutting inside on his right, caused Soufal a few issues. Robertson, generally, you know what he's going to do. He's either going to hit across from the edge of the box or he's trying to get him beyond so it will suit Soufal defensively in terms of understanding what the threat is but equally he's going to possibly have to rely on Jarrod Bowen to nullify that threat actively when West Ham are in possession push Robertson back um, and allow him to come a little bit central particularly to deal with those inverted forwards now no surprise again uh, Craig Dawson will start on the right hand side of the defence I think he's been listening. He's been fantastic in the last three games. Aerially, offensively, defensively, he's been superb. He's improved in terms of his general consistency. I think actually in terms of the defence's ability to sit back as a line at times, deal with the ball over the top, which is where the weakness clearly is with Dawson in terms of pace and mobility, has shown that he's a more attuned as a defender than we probably gave him, or certainly I gave him credit for. Against Liverpool, it's a different proposition, you know, and I know Zaha. And Eze, to a degree, made runs from deep, but he had the protection. I think against Liverpool in that high press, you worry about someone like Amane playing on the shoulder. And equally, if the run isn't tracked, can Dawson get beat for pace? Naturally, he can. Um, I think it's about West Ham and particularly Declan Rice and Soufal coming a bit central, supporting him in terms of nullifying that threat. But equally, in terms of Declan Rice being really, really switched on and trying to win that ball off somebody like Sadio Mane and force him a little bit deeper. He can still hurt us from deep areas, but I, I don't think it's good for West Ham to have someone like Mane sitting on the shoulder because as good as Dawson is airily and as switched on as he's shown and the consistency that he's shown in his game, I do worry him about him defensively in this game. I also worry about the fact that if Liverpool were able to push Firmino into a little bit more of an advanced position alongside Salah and Mane on the shoulder of the two centre-backs, it gives it, it's giving Dawson too many issues to deal with at the same time. And in terms, it's giving him a, you know, he's going to have to be decisive in terms of whether he goes to press Mane, whether he tries to be, win it off someone like a Firmino. So we need to try and limit the amount of times that that decision-making process is made, force them back a little bit deeper, and we need to protect Dawson. But equally, I think, as, as defensively concerned as I am about Craig Dawson, I think offensively in this game, it could be a real plus point. We've seen his goals from set pieces, Fantastic little bit of movement across the near post. Um, we've got fantastic delivery from those set pieces. Henderson, Nat Phillips is probably the better aerially, but Henderson struggles positionally in terms of his height as well. And as good as he is from open play, I feel like set pieces, someone like a Craig Dawson can get the better of him. So I am hopeful for him in terms of that. If West Ham can get probably a couple of limited set pieces in this game, I think you can back someone like a Craig Dawson to take the advantage of that. And we are going to need him seriously um, if we're going to get a result. Now, Obviously, on the left-hand side, no surprises. Again, Angelo Ogbonna. This game for him uh, is going to be tough in terms of how he marshals this back four. Generally speaking, I think the amount of bodies and the overloads at times that Liverpool are going to put on West Ham, even with the press of Milner, he's going to have to marshal that defence incredibly well. They're going to have to be very, very narrow. They're going to have to deal with that space. They're going to have to rely on the wire players in Fournals and Bowen looking to press and nullify the likes of Trent and Robertson who will try and create overloads in those in those wide areas as well. So there is a task on hand. I think airily this game suits him. Despite saying that, I know Mane is good in the air and can find little pockets, but I think there isn't no physical threat that's going to try and pull someone like an Angelo Ogbonna out of position. I think West Ham's team shape generally in this game, we're going to sit a little bit deeper. We're not going to look to press out. So I'm not concerned that someone like an Angelo Ogbonna is going to step up and try and win the ball because he'll get protection from those two pivots. So he's not going to be turned necessarily in behind. The concern is someone like a Salah that can run from deep and get in beyond. That is problematic, generally speaking. Um, but like very, very similar to Soufal, they're very good defensively. There's a lot of experience there. And even when Ogbonna gets beat for pace, I feel like one-on-one, -on -one, he understands that he can marshal that situation and try and nullify that threat. So again, he's going to be under a lot of pressure for this game. It is about how he marshals that that back line. But equally, you know, he's got a really positive relationship with Craig Dawson. I feel like they are very much similar 
defenders in terms of their conservatism. And I think when you looked at, you know, Ogbonna Balbuena, as good as I think Balbuena did, he was very aggressive in trying to win that ball. I feel like Craig Dawson and, and Ogbonna, there is there is a measured approach here. And West Ham aren't getting pulled out in terms of those central positions too much since he's come into the side. Left back will be Aaron Creswell. Again, and very, very similar to Sufal in this instance, we're not going to see these two in too many advanced areas in this game. In fact, I would pretty much bank the fact that you're not going to see Creswell in an overlap. Now, Aaron Creswell, defensively, this game will suit him. We've seen him in previous games playing a little bit more of an inverted position. And I think the athleticism, when when teams ask questions in terms of overlaps, they're asking questions of Aaron Creswell to go and press. And he can be exploited because he does lack that pace. He's got unbelievable delivery. And we've seen that this season from set pieces and open play. When West Ham have the ball, it tends to come into effect. Defensively, though, I think we're seeing a much more conservative approach from Creswell, which is important. Um, I think he needs to stay in the position. The back line needs to be solid. And I think the problem is he's going to have to deal with somebody like a, like a Salah, who has that general, genuine mobility that can get in beyond him. Now, what benefits him in this game is the fact that Trent is going to play an inverted position and Mohamed Salah is naturally going to come onto his left foot. There isn't going to be the threat of necessarily an overlapping winger or even a right back to a degree with, with Trent. And I think that suits Creswell in terms of his management of the game. Like I said, I think West Ham's team shape will generally sit a little bit deeper. So Creswell's not going to be asked to go and press or push as a back line. I think we'll be sitting in a low block. And I think in terms of that position, it suits Aaron Creswell in this game. Again, very, very similar to Dawson. I think his impact in that final third from set pieces will be the difference. And I think we've seen that particularly with finding the likes of Thomas Suchek. Um, and throughout the season, to be fair to Creswell, he did create a lot of opportunities from left centre-back and still continues to do so um, from left-back. So if West Ham can try and get a set-piece in this game or transition in the ball higher, in higher areas, then possibly we could see that real quality come into play. Now, the two centre-defensive midfielders, and I feel like they are going to be playing in, in that role, they've done a fantastic job recently in terms of their pressing intensity and athleticism to get back in those pivot roles. But in this game, I feel like there's going to be a real question of can you sit deep enough can you protect the two center backs and try and press up and, and stop the likes of Thiago and Milner possibly getting in behind as well as dealing with Roberto Firmino who's going to drop in those spaces between the lines between midfield and defense so let's start with Declan Rice particularly in that right defensive midfield position um I thought he was phenomenal against Crystal Palace if I'm honest I thought he's pressing his passing between the lines his ability to move on, to push West Ham up as his side, I thought was fantastic. Um, we're not going to see this in this game for me. I think there are opportunities for turnover and possession, as I said in the tactical breakdown. You can try and go and press someone like a Thiago, but that battle is so... It's very, very difficult to try and win the ball of, of somebody like a Thiago, given his ball retention, given his composure on the ball. Declan Rice equally is a press-resistant midfielder. He's fantastically composed in possession. The issue is... If Declan Rice and Suchek try and press one of these two midfielders, these two A's, they have to win the ball. I think West Ham, if Liverpool are in that high press, can't afford to go and press the ball and give space in behind, particularly between the lines, because then you're asking someone like a, a Craig Dawson to try and press a Firmino. And naturally, Mane will, will deal with that. He's got a very scripted movement and try and get him beyond. And I think we can't afford to have that in this game. I think it gets forgotten because Declan Rice has shown he's fantastic almost in an eight role. But defensively, he's superb. His awareness is fantastic. His ability to cover as well. If Soufal tries to press someone like a Robertson, he can cover those spaces. But again, West Ham have to be disciplined across the back line and in the two defensive midfield positions. Now, I would be interested to see if someone like if a Declan Rice can go win the ball, can he use his athleticism to carry the ball far enough up the pitch and try and break that Liverpool line, particularly with the high line that they play and find someone like a Mikel Antonio. We could see this in this game. Equally, we could see the switch pass. And we know how particularly if West Ham try and press a little bit higher, we get a bit more possession. Robertson's going to come a little bit central and there's going to be they're going to vacate that space on that far far right. And you'd have to look at someone like a Jared Bowman that can move into that space and the quality of passing that Declan Rice has, particularly in that Palace game. I thought some of his switch passes were superb. I think West Ham and particularly Rice need to employ this in this game if we're going to take our clutch moments. Now, the left-hand side will be Thomas Suchek. And again, I think he could get the better of James Milner in this game. I think offensively, we know of his attributes. And I think we're not going to see him too in too many high positions and him making too many late runs because the press won't be there from West Ham. The team won't try and squeeze Liverpool really in this game. And I think positionally... I don't, I don't know. I think personally, I think Declan Rice is better defensively, but I think Suchek's athleticism and work rate allows him to get back in those positions and recover the ball, which is massively crucial. And I do think he can play that defensive midfield role, but I'd like to see him use, use his athleticism to go and press a James Milner, 
who is less press resistant than a Thiago, win the ball and try and transition into someone like a Mikel Antonio or a Saeed Benrahma. That would be the way that I'd see West Ham trying to break that high line. Is it very difficult? Naturally, of course it is. I've said this before. You see Firmino dropping into that 10 roll at times to keep the ball. You know, Liverpool want to invite a team to press them because it suits them massively and it allows them to keep that high line. But Suchek genuinely, I think that battle between him and Milner, he can win that for physicality. I think Milner showed a little bit of sloppiness in possession last time out against Spurs. So that could be an area that West Ham try and win the ball in turnover push up and find someone like a Mikel Antonio, particularly with that tendency of him to come to that left-hand side and running behind, particularly when Trent as well has pushed a little bit too far forward. But an interesting battle. Again, they cannot afford to... If they don't win the ball when they go and press out for it, that's when the issues come. That's when it plays into Liverpool's hands. The attack in midfield three, I thought were phenomenal. I, I thought they were brilliant against Palace. Probably the best performance I've seen from the entire attack in midfield three. I think maybe you'd say Bowen wasn't as effective as he has been in previous games. I think you allow that him because of his defensive work rate um, and the threat that he can offer. But let's start with Pablo Fornells. Now, Pablo's work rate defensively is crucial in this game. And that's the reason why I would play him on the left-hand side. I spoke about Trent Alexander-Arnold. And I think we cannot afford for Trent or, any, or really any of the fullbacks, and I'll speak about Bowen in a minute, to allow them to come too far forward because it allows Liverpool to play that high line. I do feel Pablo Fornals' work rate generally is fantastic. If he can go and press someone like an Alexander-Arnold, prevent him from allowing to switch the play as well at times because if you give Trent too much possession, not only is he going to find a switch pass, he can find a ball in beyond to try and get someone like a Salah to possibly sit from deep and then push on and beat that line. And I think West Ham, if we can try and nullify those areas, particularly the wide areas of a Trent or a Robertson, you're preventing them, allowing them to press on us and keep possession and create overload. So I do think in some respects, West Ham needs to press in the wide areas. For now, from an attacking sense, I, uh, listen, I would love it if we had a, a player that had the raw pace on that left. I think we missed that a little bit. Um, and the same way that Bowen has that directness and that pace. So I, I can't see Fornals trying to beat the man in, in, in Trent and exploiting the space that he's going to leave. I think we are going to have to rely on Mikel Antonio, either being on the shoulder of that high line or running from deep to try and exploit that space. But nonetheless, I think, still think Pablo's got a massive role to play in this game defensively. You know, I think at times we'll be in a low block. I think positionally, in terms of his defensive shape, is fantastic. He's protected Creswell so many times this season. Again, he's going to have to come a little bit central in this game to create a, a really narrow block. I expect him to do so. He has shown that over the past few games. But in terms of the attacking third, in terms of the quality that he can add in, China, in terms of passing and the final ball... I'm not sure we're going to see it too many times in this game, but I wouldn't back. I wouldn't back against him. I think if he can win that ball of Trent, there's no reason why I can't play a decent ball into Mikel Antonio. Um, centre attacking midfielder. Needless to say, it is this man. It is Saiben Rama. Really, really happy to get him on that on that permanent deal. Like brilliant. You know, I think he's I think he's improving all the time in this West Ham side. So work rate off the ball against Palace was was different class for me. I thought. Positioning as well, he showed a bit of a willingness to get him beyond. I don't think we see that too much of him. You know, I think we speak about him as more of a, a, a playmaker that likes to sit in those 10 rolls. I think against Burnley, you see that he's got the vision and the pass to find a man in the Jared Bowen. But equally, I thought against Palace, when he made that run from, from the edge of the box and in behind to create for Antonio, that he has got that willingness to break the line. I'm not sure we're going to see it too much in this game, to be honest. I think we will see him try and press up against Wijnaldum, stop Liverpool being comfortable in possession when we're in a low block. And if there is a turnover that high up, I feel that Ben Rama's ability to find that final ball for someone like a Mikel Antonio could be crucial. I don't expect him to, if he wins that ball in turnover, to transition that quickly and go and beat the two centre-backs. I think as good as he is one-to-one, -one, I, I can't imagine him trying to beat players for pace. But I think in terms of his final ball, and we're seeing that more and more in his game, the decisiveness of that, because listen, the technical quality of Saeed Ben Rama is, is up there in the squad, but it is about taking those quick decisions rather than taking too many touches. We can see that he's improving that in his game. I think in this game as well, he's going to have to try and win the ball or use his work rate in the press. If he does win the ball, be incredibly decisive in that pass and the quality of the passing for Mikel Antonio because we do have a willing runner in this game this is a different game to the game when we played a low block against uh, Liverpool uh, way back when in October so I'm massively looking forward to it and I think Saeed Ben Rama in particular could be crucial out of possession and in possession now right hand side Jared Bowen um, again you know I thought 
again, probably didn't have the, the best performance against Crystal Palace. That would be incredibly harsh because I just feel like he's a constant threat in the box when he makes those inverted runs. He's fantastic at finding space. I think when West Ham, I doubt we're going to get too much possession in, in Liverpool's box at times, but his ability to find space in the box alongside Thomas Suchek creates another avenue, creates overloads and allows West Ham to, to get chances on goal. Now, I think defensively, he's, he's going to be pivotal in this game. I think that is Bowen's real... Um, quality, the fact that as good as he can be in terms of his directness and pace going forward and his finishing, which he's not really been decisive in in terms of his decision making, but I just feel like his ability to go and press someone like an, an Andy Robertson could be the difference in this game. You know, I think we cannot afford to allow Robertson to get in beyond and try and get deliveries into the box because what it does, it initiates Mane to play in that inverted role. I think if we can push Andy Robertson a little bit further back, Mane is going to have to come into deep areas at times to go and pick up the ball. You want Mane as far away from somebody like a Craig Dawson and a Declan Rice as possible. If you can push him back a bit far, far enough with someone like a Jared Bowen, then you are naturally allowing someone like a Rice to go and press a Thiago. And if we win the ball, then there is a possibility that you know, any recovery from Liverpool isn't going to hurt West Ham. So again, you know, you look at the wide areas in terms of work rate, bow and four nows, push up against them, stop them getting deliveries into the box, allow someone like Amane to come deep and the Salah to stay a little bit wide. And all of a sudden these overloads, they're not as problematic for West Ham. It's easier said than done naturally, because I think at times teams can make mistakes. We could get caught out of possession. They will able they will be able to play that high line. But I would hope in this game that the work rate we've seen from Fournals and Bowen previously is employed um, and West Ham can try and nullify Liverpool in terms of playing that press. Now, up front, the difference in this game, which are, you know is so huge and it, it, it's underestimated, is Mikel Antonio. Um, Antonio is so good not only because of the goals that he gets and the positions that he takes up centrally, but how he influences the overall play. And against Liverpool last time out, we missed that. You know, Sebastian Allaire, I'm not going to go on too much about him because I feel like I've uh, dug him out a little bit too much recently. But he was coming into deep areas and he wasn't holding the ball up effectively enough. And it wasn't inviting West Ham to get forward. With Mikel Antonio's athleticism, particularly in terms of hold-up play, players know that he can retain the ball long enough for West Ham to press up. So it does give us an avenue in transition. But I would like to see Mikel Antonio play on the shoulder of these two centre-backs or try and play through the middle. You see, Human Son was able to find a space through the middle of the two centre-backs where they're, a little, they're caught a little bit too square on and they're playing a high line and they can get caught. The difference in this game is that West Ham can adopt a low block and allow someone like a Mikel Antonio to come a bit deeper and run from those deep areas. And also the tendency to come off to that left-hand side where Trent presses up a bit too much. Antonio is going to have space in this game. I think West Ham, again, if we can have a quality switch pass from the likes of a Creswell or a Declan Rice or at times press up or Ben Rama, find a little bit of room from a breakdown in, in play then possibly Mickey Antonio has a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Now, that sounds massively optimistic, given the fact that Liverpool are so good in possession. But I feel like West Ham, particularly in terms of ball recovery from a, from a Thomas Suchek or a Declan Rice, there will be moments in this game that West Ham will be able to get the ball around the halfway line. And I think Mikel Antonio's intention to get him beyond, his directness to get him beyond, um, will cause Liverpool some issues. Now, again, some people may say, well, his finishing isn't, isn't, isn't quality. That could be an issue, but I feel like he was a little bit unlucky against Crystal Palace uh, other than one shot that he should have really scored. He hit the post twice. He has scored two goals in previous games and, and I feel he's the difference for me. He's the difference in this game. You look at Liverpool's personnel at centre-back, you look at our forward, it's a completely different outlet to last time. And I feel like he's going to be the game-changer from open play. Aside from that, it will be a set-piece sort of... We'll have to take advantage of the set pieces for me. It, you know, if we, we can't get Antonio into the game. I also think as well, Antonio, even if he's sitting in that in that sort of deep line 10 role at times, he can put pressure on a wine album. He can stop Liverpool trying to play in that higher press or even play out from the back. So that could be a, a, a crucial element of it and it could create turnover in high areas. The benefit of having Mikel Antonio is that he can win the ball and transition with it quickly. You know, and I think that is what West Ham may have to rely on in this game. And listen, he's been fantastic in previous Liverpool games. Wouldn't put it past him to get a goal here. I know that sounds a little bit optimistic, but just in terms of the way that Liverpool played defensively, I think Mickey has got some real, real strengths. In terms of a score prediction, this has been a massively long video. It wasn't supposed to be, but um, in terms of score predictions, I'm going to go one all, And I think it'll be tough for West Ham to keep Liverpool out for 90 minutes, particularly in the way that they play, the overloads, the wide areas, the amount of avenues that, that Liverpool can hurt us. If West Ham can not concede a goal against Liverpool for 90 minutes, that's an incredibly impressive defensive performance. I think we get a goal from a set piece, if I'm honest. 
Um, I think Liverpool are weak from that. I can see someone like a Mikel Antonio breaking, getting a corner or drawing a foul. And I think if West Ham do have that opportunity, we'll flood the box. You've got Declan Rice, Thomas Suchek, Angelo Ogbonna, Craig Dawson. There's so many quality players airily. I think Liverpool are going to struggle to deal with that. So but it'll be a tight game. I can't imagine it being too interesting. But I am looking forward to it. And I am looking forward to the challenge. And fingers crossed we get a result. Even if we get a draw, it's still a very, very good performance against the Premier League champions. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the West Ham My YouTube channel. And until tomorrow, make sure you watch the watch along from 4 o'clock. There'll be lineups, build up, and live match commentary with all the usual suspects. Um, and until then, take care.